loves you deeply. He loves you so much that he went all the way to the cross for you. He didn't just die an ordinary death, he died a very, very brutal and harsh death. He was flogged, he was defamed, he was scourged, and he was crucified. He literally hung up on that cross with nails in his hands and his feet, like so. What an awful way to go. But why would he do that willingly? When Pontius Pilate asked him about his crime that he may have committed, Jesus didn't even try to defend himself. He went quietly, silently, as a lamb to the slaughter. And that's what the Bible refers to Jesus as, the perfect, blemish-free, spotless Lamb of God, the only one who's actually able to atone for our sin. And sin is at the door, isn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Who among us can say that we have never done anything bad against anybody? Who among us can say that nobody has ever told a lie or stolen something? You know, the list goes on. And here we are, we're approaching the festive season, that Christmas season, that we are really, we know about in our tradition, what our family does it. But what does it really mean? Well, Christmas is a Catholic tradition. It's not actually got anything to do with Christianity itself. It is a pagan festival, hence the greenery. Sorry to break it to you, but it has nothing to do with our Lord Jesus. Jesus wasn't born on the 25th of December, was he? So God loves you, but there is a sin problem, unless you're right with the Lord already and you've had your, your sins forgiven. How wonderful it is to say, my sins have been forgiven. That is awesome. I haven't forgiven myself, per se, but the Lord has forgiven me, and he has clothed me with his own righteousness. Because, to be honest, how can we know how much the price of soul is? You know, how much is it? We can't possibly know that. So there's no amount of good works we can do that will actually save us. And in fact, that is, that is religiosity if you try and save yourself by giving charity or by being good to people or doing this or that other kind deed. That is pure religiosity and that will send you to hell, unfortunately. There are many lovely, nice people that unfortunately have gone to hell. Why? Because they rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. They rejected him. God doesn't reject you. He loves you unconditionally. But if you've rejected him, that hurts him. And that puts you not in the right standing with the Lord. So, if you want eternal life, you have to call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was the one that split time in half. That is why we're living in this year, 2019. It is thanks to Jesus and his death and his life. So Jesus saves guilty sinners like you and me. I hope you'd be happy to admit that you have sin. And actually, God will not resist the humble. He gives his grace to the humble when you lower yourself before the Lord. If you're proud before God, it will not go well with you on Judgment Day. And judgment is coming. Nobody knows how long they will live for. I might die even today. Nobody knows how long they've got to live for, how dreadful. Every death is a tragedy. If you're a young child or a baby or an adult, every death is a tragedy, every single one. And so I don't want anybody to go to hell if I can help it. That is why I'm out here today. I want to help tell you, explain to you how you can become saved, how you can have a right relationship with God, and how you can just walk in freedom and just say, great, my sins are forgiven. It's wonderful. It's really, really wonderful. And no, I'm not part of a cult. No, I don't go to Catholic church. What you need to get right with the Lord is a good Bible, and you need to pray to him. You need to confess your sins. Tell him what you've done. Being saved is about having a good relationship with Jesus. It's not about your religiosity. It's not about your good works. There are lots of very nice atheists in hell, 
there are lots of very nice all sorts of other people I don't mind what persuasion you're from we all need to have a relationship with Christ in order to be saved in order to walk with God in heaven but eternity doesn't just start on the afterlife it can actually start in the here and now I'm living the afterlife in the here and now I have heavenly I have spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That means I'm not blessed here on earth. I can't click my fingers and have all sorts of healing given to me, all sorts of wealth given to me. No, that was an old covenant with the old Hebrew people. But the new covenant that Jesus established is a spiritual covenant where we have spiritual blessings, not generally tactical or physical blessings. Of course, God can do those things, but the covenant is a spiritual-based one, not a physical one. Do you want to be saved? Do you want heaven or do you want hell? The choice, as ever, is yours. God designed man in his image with free will and free choice. So we can choose him or we can live happily and ignore him. The choice as ever is ours. What will we choose? I would recommend that you don't leave it too late because like I said, nobody knows how many more breaths and heartbeats they have left. We have the Holy Spirit right here, right now. When Jesus was on, his, was on the earth giving his ministry, he said, I will leave one like me to minister to us and to comfort to us, to the believers. How hard is it to believe? Well, that's a matter of the heart. And I cannot, I cannot change your heart. I cannot change your mind. Actually, it's down to God to do a work in your heart to be convicted about what I'm telling you. So who could you else believe on? Would you believe on the name of Muhammad or Buddha or some other deity? Or maybe you just want to believe in yourself. Those people have been passed away. But Jesus actually returned to earth. There was over 500 eyewitnesses to what he did. He turned up again on earth. Praise the Lord. So there were a lot of eyewitnesses that saw Christ after he was um, visibly destroyed, crucified. And so that's how we, we know we can believe in him and trust in him. It's because there were eyewitnesses that saw him, proving that he was God manifest in the flesh. You see, sinful man couldn't make their way up to God, but God made a way down to man. Do you see how loving he is? Do you see what he did there? That is incredible. We can't do that many good works to make our way up to him. We are not holy. We're just not holy. As soon as you do one single tiny little sin, that means, you know, we're unholy. But we are redeemable. We can come to the Lord and ask Him for forgiveness. And we can put our trust in Him that He will actually come through and save us. Because the Word of God says that He is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. And He requires that we have faith in Him as well in return. Otherwise, that's it, we're not saved. So it is by faith that you are saved, not of works, so that nobody can vote. If you find someone boasting about their good works, you might find that they're not necessarily saved. Just follows, doesn't it? It's just logic. Who would like to make a decision for Christ today? Who would like to know that they are sealed, that they are the Lord's beloved possession? a treasured possession. You can have that assurance. You can know that you're a child of God. Signed, sealed and delivered, I'm yours. That is how, God, how much God loves us and he wants us to be in right relationship with him. So do you really think you need a savior or do you think you're good enough by yourself? Do not kill. 
kill. Do not commit adultery. Yikes. Do not covet. That is to desire what someone else has for yourself. Do not covet. What are the point? What is the point of these laws of the Ten Commandments? If a Christian is set free, they are to teach us still that we need a saviour. We do need a saviour. I recognise as a little child that I need a saviour. I felt guilty. I watched the Pizza RJ video and I felt guilty about it as a little six year old. So, I recognise as a little child, and children have got some intuition, amen? Haven't they? Wow. So I recognised right back then that there was something very wrong with me, and I knew that heaven was out of the question for somebody, somebody like me. Because I recognised in myself that I had imperfections, I'd made mistakes, even as a little kid. That is not to say that little kids go to hell, they most certainly do not. God loves the innocent children. God loves the innocent children. Amen. So praise God for all his goodness. Say it again. Praise God for all his goodness. So if there is a sin problem, guess what? There is a sin solution as well. There is a sin solution. Oh. His name is Jesus Christ. He can save you from your sins. He died for you 2,000 years ago. Don't smirk like that, sir. You know you sinned. You know you've done wrong. We've all done wrong. But that's why Christ came to save us from our sins, of course. This is not churchianity. This is not religiosity. This is a, thri a thriving faith, a living faith in the Christ that died for us, was raised again, and was seen by over 500 eyewitnesses according to the scriptures. Do not harden your hearts to the message of good news, but it is the power of Christ to save you from your sins. Don't harden your hearts. So Why would you do that to yourself? You, you, you could be saved today if you'd like it. Hello. Well, I thought I'd just um, do a bit of a street preach here in St Ives. Um, went okay I suppose. I thought I hope there would be more people as it's a Saturday on the lead up to Christmas but no. So that's how it goes I suppose. Um sure it's been very busy recently with all kinds of political um, protests and just sort of goings on and I didn't want to be another voice like in the marketplace of ideas competing against Labour or you know remain or or ex or brexit or anything else like that i just wanted to have sort of an unadulterated gospel message being preached um my voice is hurting a little bit uh, standard. <laughs> it was really nice that um, my friends came out and supported the street preaching and they were manning the cameras today so that was really helpful um, i'm really really grateful for my friends to come out and Stand, stand with us in the street preaching. Also makes me seem less of like a one-man band kind of thing because um, I believe a crowd uh, attracts another tra another crowd um, and so yeah it was really nice to kind of see people's expressions as I was preaching and see the different responses and things like that. And thank you for watching. Um, if you haven't already please uh, click like and if you'd like to see more content like this please subscribe. Let's just pray for more street preaching to be going on and for you know let's try and um, win more souls for the Lord because if more of us tried a bit harder to to win souls for the Lord um, then that would be brilliant and um, then they can those people that get one for the Lord they, they can try as well so it's like a domino effect so please everybody please keep trying and um, doing what you're doing um, and you know conspire together <laughs> that's probably the wrong word but you know put your heads together and see what can be done and like make plans and make come up with ideas and then you never know pray into it see what, what can come about 
uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Anyway, God bless you guys and uh, thanks very much for watching uh, this content and um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just blown away that you're, that you're sticking with us. Thank you.